My name is Carol Ann and I'm filling in today for uh, Father David, who's away. We're continuing with our Book of Common Prayer evening prayer, starting on page 17, if you have a copy. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Dearly beloved, the scripture moves us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble ourselves nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well as for the body as for the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto everyone in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life to hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to help us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Reading from Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. 
But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand I shall not fail. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope, for you will not abandon me to the grave nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Continuing with the Magnificent. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his spirit is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He remembers the mercy, his mercy, and has helped his servant Israel, as he promised to our forebearers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. From 1 Peter chapter 5. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. Cast all your anxieties on him, for he cares about you. Reading the Nuncdimitus from St. Luke. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, 
and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're going to continue on with our reading from Philip Yancey's book, Church, Why Bother? An excellent little uh, read full of wisdom and very useful applications here. Continuing on page 81, if any of you have the copy at home and would like to follow. Philip Yancey is talking about strength through weakness in the church. Paradoxically, when a church avoids ministry because of the pain and complications it may bring, the church itself suffers. It remains stunted and does not mature. Jesus gave us a model for the work of the church at the Last Supper. While his disciples kept proposing more organization, hey, let's elect officers, establish a hierarchy, set standards of professionalism, Jesus quietly picked up a towel and basin of water and began to wash their feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you, he said. That's recorded in John chapter 13, verse 15. I have come to recognize this spirit of service as the single greatest hallmark of a church doing the will of God. Buildings, facilities, a board well stocked with shrewd businessmen, these may all make a church run smoothly, but the underlying question is, what is it running smoothly for? I look for a congregation that fosters the quality of hypersensitivity to pain. Whereas the rest of us turn our faces from the homeless, then shake our heads and get on with our lives, servants say, no, we cannot turn away from this pain. Homeless people bear God's image too. We must serve them as Jesus would, as if they were Jesus. Reflecting on Jesus' style of ministry, Paul said, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant. That's recorded in Philippians chapter two, verses five and seven. The biblical pattern for ministry recognizes that the path to strength proceeds through weakness. Paul himself pled three times for his thorn in the flesh to be removed, and we can only speculate on the content of those prayers. Lord, think how much more effective I would be if you removed this thorn. It's holding me back in my ministry. It's inhibiting your work. I could accomplish great things if you healed this problem and let me regain my strength. The answer to the apostles' prayers was a firm negative. Why did God allow Paul's suffering to continue? The apostle himself gives the blunt reason, to keep me from being conceited. God had said to him, my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul learned to respond, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest in me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 records this. 
At 12-step groups, I have heard wrenching stories of what it takes for a person to learn to confront his or her own brokenness, to reach, quote, the end of myself, unquote, as they often put it. Alcoholics tell of an excruciating process that must play itself out before they can admit they are weak, not strong, and must permanently depend on a higher power as a source of outside strength. There is an easier way to learn these lessons I have found. Volunteer in some ministry arm of the church. I have seen in my own wife the direct and personal benefits of ministry. She went to a per pure, poorly furnished office each day and spent her time among people who rarely said thank you. She had to raise her own salary, a procedure that replayed her missionary kid's shame. But I can truthfully say that her willingness to expose herself to others' pain had ended up nourishing her as much as them. With all the objectivity a husband can muster, I see her now as a stronger, more beautiful person. She received few rewards for her work as the world measures them. The rewards work themselves out inside her. Those who minister have an opportunity to learn compassion. The very word means to suffer with. Humility, patience, and other such qualities that would never even make the agenda at most Fortune 500 firms. We dare not discount the rewards that God grants. They are precious to God and more valuable than any amount of money and prestige one can accumulate in other professions. Jesus' most oft-repeated declaration in the Gospels is that we find ourselves by losing them. We lose them best in service to others. Hypersensitivity to pain can be a resource, an unexpected gift. The same tears that break our hearts may also nourish us in ways that matter most to God. Continuing on page 24 of the Book of Common Prayer, the Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.